Hey there. Do y'all remember that show in the 90s where that girl would like walk through the mirror and end up in Wonderland or something like that? Welcome back to Mr. Larry. I'm Mr. Larry and this is Mr. Larry. And today we are exploring the wonderful world of recycling and upcycling, which is a word I just cannot get behind. I just, I don't like that word. It just sounds gross. We're taking old stuff and making new stuff, basically which is not foreign for this channel. It's one of my favorite things, in fact. And if you're new here, welcome. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications and do all the stuff, okay? Before we jump into today's project, we're gonna have a little chit chat, a little chit chat. And I'm gonna share three, <laughs> three things with you that'll be helpful for our project, starting with thing number one. History has a way of repeating itself. And time has proven again and again that when the chips are down, people generally find a way to keep moving forward and sometimes even thrive under the strangest conditions. The latter half of the Second World War is a prime example of this enduring human quality. Things like food, industrial materials, and even clothing were rationed to support the war effort by June 1st, 1941. These textile rations led to innovation with families learning how to make do with things like clothing hand-me-downs and thrifted fabric. In fact, in Britain, the Make Do and Mend campaign was launched to help encourage people to take better care of the clothing that they did have. The campaign included things like washing and storage tips, mending tips, and ways to be innovative with spare fabric. One of the greatest examples of this innovation in cinema is the Scarlett O'Hara dress made of curtains in the 1939 film Gone with the Wind or Bob the Drag Queen's dress on season eight of RuPaul's Drag Race. And y'all know I am no stranger to curtains myself. Which brings us to thing number two. Recycling didn't stop after the war. In fact, households found new ways to reduce, reuse, and recycle for the next several decades. If you've watched my videos before, you know that the 70s are probably the craftiest decade in recent history. But it wasn't until the 80s that we saw the strange fruits of this recycling effort. The younger generation of the 80s were looking for a way to stand out and be unique, and they turned to all things DIY. The punk movement of the late 70s and 80s had a huge impact on the DIY community. And everything from sleeveless denim jackets to wild and crazy digital type were being explored. People creatively altered their clothing, their hair, they remixed their music, and they decorated their homes with self-expression as their guide. And after all, all things old can be made new again. Copyright Effie Trinket. Did y'all know the first Hunger Games movie is now 10 years old? Like. And so dumpster diving, thrift shops, charity shops, car boot sales, they are. <laughs> By about six months ago, it's a nice little find at um, a local car boot sale. So that came from a car boot sale? That's right, yes. They all became commonplace. It's a great location for stuff you might want to reinvent. I have a personal affinity for apartment complex dumpsters. Yo. What? It's never been this bad before. Oh, um, this is not the dumpster I was I was I was gonna be talking to y'all about. God. But yeah, if you live in an apartment complex, people are always moving in and out, throwing away their furniture, usually pieces that aren't bad or in bad shape. They just don't need them anymore, don't have the space. So check them out sometimes. But oh my goodness. When seeking a nice knick-knack or a piece of furniture to rehabilitate, there's no greater source. And that's where I found the two mirrors that we'll be working on today. Which brings us to thing number three. Today's project is inspired by an artist that I really admire named Anne Upton. Anne is a wonderful painter and artist who frequently transforms old furniture into impressive pieces. And she often showcases interestingly painted mirror frames on her channel. I love the work that she does and the amount of color that she infuses her pieces with. So we're gonna take a page from her book and see what we can do with it. My favorite part of this project is that you can showcase a little DIY in your space while keeping it functional and spacious feeling. If you don't have room for a painting, maybe you have room for a mirror. 
So I start out by repairing the back of this mirror. I really just taped this together, nothing fancy. And then I covered the back in gaffer's tape, which is a favorite product of mine. It has a nice texture. The other thing I did was cover the front of the mirror with typing paper that I like taped to the mirror and taped together. So it creates this nice shield for any of the paints or sealants that I'll be using for this process. I'm starting with acrylic paint and a nice filbert brush. And my process here is to just do a nice even coat across the entirety of the frame with the exception of that little gold area in the middle. Now you could spray paint these frames white and prime them that way, but since I'm doing this in my traditional painting style, I'm gonna prime them with white using my brush. And of course we'll be doing the smaller mirror as well. So I've got that one here on a soft surface on top of the large mirror since it takes up my whole table. And then on top of that, I'm gonna apply this shade of yellow ochre, which is basically just the base color of all of my paintings. It just helps me to get the warmth and the colors that I like to have, and gives me something at the very bottom of the painting that isn't solid white. Here are a couple of my latest works in progress, which are kind of the basis for my ideas on these paintings. I just wanna do some really atmospheric, beautiful shades of color shifting with clouds, and some, you know, twinkling stars and stuff. And um, we'll just see where it goes from there. So I'll be painting and blending my colors directly onto the frame wherever possible. And my goal is to just get some nice color shifting throughout the entirety of the frame so that from any angle, from any side, there's something interesting. I'm also extending my painting to the edges of the frames just to make sure that even that little lip has some cool, interesting color happening on it. So I'll let this layer dry and then I'll dry brush some additional colors on top of it and just kind of blend them in some more. And of course, I'm gonna add some clouds to that in a moment. I paint my clouds in layers, starting with a dark color and then I change to a medium shade. Sometimes I even change the color entirely. And then I'll go on top of that eventually with a shade of white. And then I just sort of blend them all together. It gives me that really fluffy cloud appearance and uh, helps me to create the illusion of depth around the painting. Okay, so this is one of my favorite things. I like to add some atmospheric speckles. I usually use about 60% paint, 30% water, just sort of mixed on the end of my brush and flick it around the canvas, or in this case, around the frame. And it gives me little dots of color. Sometimes I do white, sometimes I'll do other shades of color, as you'll see um, in the end result of this, of this project. And I think it just adds sort of like a twinkling star effect and gives me a little bit more texture in those areas of color. Now that I've finished up the bulk of the painting and I've gotten the edges covered and the clouds are nice and fluffy, I want to add in a little bit of gold. I just want to take the very inside edge and cover that in this gold leafing. So we start with our adhesive size, which is a special glue made for gold leaf. And you paint that on and let it dry for about five minutes or so. It really doesn't take very long. And then from there, you just apply the gold leaf directly onto the areas where your adhesive was applied. It'll stick to the gold, and then you can sort of brush away the parts that aren't stuck, and then that's how you get it to go exactly where you want. The mirror is large, but the edges are not very wide, so I didn't want to go too far with the gold. I think we've added just the right touch. And finally, I'm gonna coat these frames with a couple of coats of Mod Podge with a glossy finish. I think it's just gonna really help to bring all of those colors to life and help this feel like a real keepsake piece of decor. And our work is finished. I think that the gloss 
finish really brings out the color and it helps to reflect the light, which just makes it feel more brilliant. And, and all of that really helps to add something extra special to the space. This was so much fun, honestly. Um, I learned some things along the way and I tried some new things as well. That's the same thing, isn't it? Thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of Mr. Larry. I hope that it was reflective for you. <laughs> if you liked what you saw today or if you give this project a try on your own, leave me a comment below and connect with me on Instagram and TikTok at Mr.Larry to show me your work. We'll do some crafting, we'll do some dancing, we'll do some vibing, you know. <laughs> what a project. I hope you've got a great week ahead of you and that you are finding some way to stay crafty and stay creative. Bye.